Chapter 10 Louis and I slept late and made love immediately upon waking. I flipped over on my belly, looked over my shoulder as seductively as I could first thing in the morning, and said, Do you want to? Louis wanted to. Afterward, I made scrambled eggs and coffee. Louis insisted upon washing the dishes. Talking book was on the stereo, and Louis was barefoot and wearing my purple Hendrix's God t-shirt, elbow deep in dishwater, and I took the wildest notion to throw my arms around the boy and beg him to stay with me forever and ever and will never be lonely anymore. One thing about me. I'm no good at separating love and sex. One night of even pleasant sex with a man, and damned if I can't look into his eyes and see the midnight sun. Still, if one can't fall in love, albeit briefly, with a beautiful sweet boy who does the breakfast dishes, then what's it all about, Alfie? So I drove Louis home, already wondering if I should ask him back that. So, and I, so, so I drove Louis home, already wondering if I should ask him back that night, and stopped off in the village. And it was in the oldies section of the Tower Records in Westwood Village that I actually met Keith. I was thumbing through the old, the moldy oldies, as I did periodically in my never-ending search for new material. As I've mentioned before, there were a certain number of people who were coming to see me at Sawyer's every single week, sometimes both nights. I'll never forget Donna Summers was my... I'll never forget Donna Summers was playing at a bone-crushing decibel level throughout the store. Ooh, I feel love, I feel love, I feel love, I feel love. A song I hated with every fiber of my being. The incessant mechanical boom, boom, boom was nearly enough to send me screaming from the store. Funny thing, because now I can't hear that goddamn song without thinking of Keith. Anyways, I picked up this old Rick Nelson album and was asking myself if I really wanted to shell out fifteen ninety nine for an album I'd probably play all of once, just because the cover photo was so cool, when I noticed this big blonde animal who had just entered the store, made a beeline for the oldies, and was standing to my left. A real brick WC, if you get my drift. Keeping my head turned ever so slightly to the left, using the peripheral vision as much as possible, notwithstanding to appear too obvious, I gave the big guy a quick once-over. He was a pretty cat, a solid 8 on the Johnny Ray Rousseau 10 scale, where Tab Hunter and Damn Yankees is a 9. Pas mal du tot, as my misogynation-prone French forebears might have said. He reminded me of the young Marlon Brando, circa 1954. There was something decidedly Kowalski-esque about him, about his big muscled body, his wide, somewhat bow-legged stance, the short, honey-blonde hair pushed straight back off his face, which is not to say he looked like Brando exactly. True, he did have that sloping, rather Neanderthal brow, and a nose that may or may not have been broken once or twice, and a Brandonish sort of mouth, full, almost pouty, with the upper lip taking just the slightest precedence over the lower. It was a mouth that begged to be kissed, but it seemed open to persuasion. Mostly, though, it was the guy's build that made me think of Brando, a build which, if you had to describe it in one word, that word would have to be thick. Thick neck, thick chest, thick legs. It was pretty thick elsewhere, too. Thick-headed, among other things, but of course I wasn't to find that out until some time later. It wasn't difficult to imagine him with a hot, smoking, mid-fifties model Harley between his thighs. The thought caused an immediate rise in the old hunkometer. The guy seemed to have started at the very beginning of the 80s and was quickly and methodically picking up an album, quickly scanning the selection list and returning it to the bin. I could hardly help but notice the softball-sized biceps that bulged as the big guy's arms went up and down. I thought, wow. Now, I might as well confess here and now that I have always appreciated a man with a certain amount of solid muscle mass. I mean, I really dig the barbell boys. For me, there's no such thing as too much muscle. As a child, I never missed a Hercules movie on television. There I'd sit, not three feet from the old RCA Victor 21-inch, mouth hanging on its hinges, staring with what I can only be termed, well, with what can only be termed fascination, at Steve Reeves' monumental man tits, bouncing up and down as he walked. Ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum. Absolutely hypnotic. Not surprisingly, not surprising that I'm still an absolute sucker for a pretty pair of pectoralis majori. I'll forgive a weakish chin or a nose with the direction of its own for a really nice chest. So naturally, when I noticed this big blonde standing there beside the oldies but goodies bin, not five feet away from me and Ray Charles could 
But naturally, when I noticed this big blonde standing there beside the oldies but goodies bins, not five feet away from me and Ray Charles, I could see that the cat's muscle, muscles had muscles. Well, let it suffice to say that my curiosity, at least, was immediately armed.